Hello, I'm Alejandro Peñero Iglesias. I'm going to present an overview of the development of the Vulcan drivers for the Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm going to start with a summary of the contents of this presentation. Uh, I'm going to start with the development story of, for the driver. Uh, I will move then to the current state of the driver, what we support, what is working, what's not. Uh, I then will mention a little some of the challenges that we had while we were doing the implementation and I will close the presentation with the future plans for the driver and also uh, about how uh, anyone could contribute uh, for the driver so starting with the development story uh, the name for the driver is V3DB that is basically uh, the same name that the OpenGL driver for the device uh, adding at the end of B for Vulkan. Um, we thought about other names, uh, but in the end we decided that um, reusing the OpenGL name and, and, and V will help um, to avoid confusion. Uh, it started, uh, uh, the development started in, in a public fork of Mesa. Um, in fact, it started uh, as private while on, on the early stage because uh, as we started from, from scratch there were a lot of moving pieces and then we moved to a public fork and this month, uh, last week, um, the, the driver was merged on Mesa Masters or right now the development uh, is on, on Mesa. Uh, the driver is reused several of the uh, of several of the system pieces from Mesa. Uh, specifically, uh, it uh, reused the Windows system interface implemented on, on Mesa. It expands the, the compiler uh, that, that was uh, initially created for the OpenGL driver. Um, in this case, uh, all, most of the Mesa drivers uh, at some point uh, represent the shaders on the inter intermediate representation called NIR. So we already have a backend that compiles that NIR from NIR to the assembly of uh, the GPU for the Raspberry Pi 4. So we were able to mostly use it, but expand a little uh, for Vulkan specifics. And we are using the same kernel interface as uh, B3D is using. Uh, the thing is that um, as a starting point our plan was using the kernel interface in order to reduce the number of pieces that we needed to modify. But in the end, and right now, now that the driver is more functional, we found that we were able to do that, to do everything needed for Vulkan 1.0 without modifying the kernel interface. Uh, perhaps in the future we span uh, in order to, to get an interface that fits better with Vulkan but from, for now uh, having the same kernel interface is working for us. So uh, moving is, is trying to explain how the, the driver um, evolved through time with milestones. Uh, the development started around November although the first month it was mostly about um, analyze the, all the effort that it was needed because our, our plans at the beginning was starting with the core functionality for Vulkan 1.0 and only the mandatory features so we started listing uh, what we wanted to do uh, the priorities and started to investigate a little on compiling with the OpenGL driver and, and the specification of the GPU how that could be done the real, the real work, uh, coding, uh, started around the server. Uh, by January, we got the Orphis, uh, the classical triangle demo working. Uh, so then, between January and May, we were uh, working mostly using uh, tests, individual tests. Specifically, we were trying to use as much as possible CTS. I will talk about that uh, later. So we were not using uh, or visualizing too much uh, on the screen. We were just using tests that say yes, it works, it's not, and that we really focus on really specific features. Around May, we tested uh, the driver, uh, 
uh, using the Sasha Williams demos. Uh, Sasha Williams demos are a really popular demos using Vulkan. Uh, they are using uh, both as tutorial and um, both as and as for drivers to test them and it's really common in, if you want to show something with your Vulkan driver or if you are trying to learn Vulkan to use that those demos as reference so around May we got uh, we tested them by, by the first time and we got several of them already working uh, as I mentioned before, we started uh, on a private repository, mostly because, as I mentioned, we started from scratch. So uh, we were moving a lot of things in this moving in the sense that we started some development and we then realized that um, the design of that solution didn't cover all the cases that uh, that were needed. So in several cases, we needed to rewrite, rewrite a lot. So we preferred to first work uh, privately uh, before moving to open a uh, somewhat open development uh, over a stable, a stable base. So around June we moved the development open repository at that point on a public fork. Uh, still, although we already at that point we already knew more about what we wanted to do and how, uh, we still had a lot of things that we were changing back and forth. So we th we thought that we were, it was not still the point to to ask the driver to be made it upstream and then moving to the uh, using a message of workflow. Around July. Uh, we, one of our colleagues, uh, asked if we tried some some, some applications, specifically the Quake games, uh, basically because they are popular, and and we checked and we we saw that the advantage of those games is that were that they were small enough and open source and and they were still well maintained and they have obviously a Vulkan port. So around July 20 we tested and we found that we didn't need too much effort to get them working uh, and working on them a little and we got uh, those running. And around August we got uh, all the features needed for uh, Vulkan 1.0. Uh, so then we were mostly focused on on getting uh, all the CTS, uh, all the tests needed to get a conformance. And around October, so this month, uh, we moved the development of Mesa upstream. So right now uh, it's not on a fork, but it's um, part of the upstream project. So uh, going now, I think I think on detail, um, the initial early milestone was to render on hardware. And the objective was trying to to use the most simple test possible. Uh, and the thing is that for that case, uh, the, it's usual to show the as the most basic Vulkan test the famous triangle that just run uh, a color triangle. But in that case, uh, we we did, we decided to go even simpler. The thing is that for that triangle, we you still need uh, the compiler. You still need to define the vertex. So we found that it was possible to to write a Vulkan test more simple, even simpler than that. That was doing just a a clearing, a, a Vulkan clear. Uh, the advantage of that is that uh, that also allowed us to work in parallel. I mean, I mean, for this project we were working mostly uh, Jago Taral and myself. So while Jago was uh, working on getting uh, this really simple book and test uh, to to work, uh, I have been working on plugging the compiler, the set of compilers. So since uh, the advantage of, of going so simple is that if we would try to to make a to get working a um, somewhat more complex uh, test, uh, the problem is that uh, as we will have several pieces of the, the of the driver that they needed to work. So if it fails, that that would mean that we, you need to debug all of, all of them. So we wanted to to have a test that needed a code path as with so little pieces as possible. 
So after that, then yes, we move as I mentioned to the triangle, and then we move to other tests. But after getting some of basic tests working, our objective was trying to move to use uh, Vulkan CTS as as reference. Uh, as for what it were, uh, CTS is the is the official test suite from Kronos. That Kronos is the consortium that uh, defines Vulkan. Uh, that is a, a really detailed uh, test suite. Uh, that in addition to to be needed or to be mandatory to to so a driver could be uh, conformant to the spec it also helps a lot to to iterate on the development but the thing is that it requires some minimal functionality first so basically the the in order to uh, check for the outcome. So, for example, if you are testing uh, that uh, that that, that um, the cities are working, so you are rendering for using a given uh, city operation, then you need to get the image and, and compare against a reference. Uh, and, and the same with with um, with buffers. If you are doing an operation of on all your tests, you need to save. Uh, the outcome on, on a buffer. So after those basic tests, uh, we move to, to to get the minimal functionality to get CTS tests running. Uh, USBOs, SSBOs, uh, copy between images and, and buffers, etc. Uh, additionally, uh, we were also using the CTS for regression testing. So in our workflow, um, as soon as we have some features working. Every time that we added more tests, more features, uh, all commits uh, we were not allowing to to regress other parts of the driver. So, and at the same time, uh, CTS was a really big uh, test suite. It has around half million tests. So what we were doing was getting uh, using the more relevant tests for the features that we were developing and creating a subset. And at the same time, we also were using a, a tool called Parallel DK Runner that allowed us to, to run the test in parallel and also handle the crashes uh, better than the CTS itself. So as, as I mentioned, what our workflow was working on a feature and we, when we got the, the patches, test against the, the, the subset of the, the CTS and it passes, integrated the patches and also inc uh, increase the, the subset. Uh, right now, uh, with the Vulkan 1.0 almost ready, we have around uh, 10,000 tests working and they run in around uh, 10 minutes. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we are not including all the possible tests. So, uh, during the week, we we run the full CTS uh, two or three times per week, more or less. Uh, and the good news is that uh, right now, as we don't have too many crosses, that uh, the time needed for that is not too much. Because, uh, as I mentioned, we, one of the reasons to use Paladix Runner is because it handles better the crosses. But in any case, if you are doing a full, a full room with all the tests, and you get too much crashes, uh, it, the times are really bad. So at the beginning, around June, May, you need like 10 hours for a full room. And right now, uh, as we are almost passing all the tests, in four hours you have the full room. Uh, during the development, we also have a philosophy of assert as much as possible. And when we assert as much as possible, I mean mostly for features that we are not implementing or that we know that they are going for code paths that we are not implementing yet. Uh, the reason for doing that is that uh, we want, for any error or any problem or any failure on the test, we want the test to file as soon as possible and more code because then it's more easy to, to track. And at the same time, uh, in general, for a uh, GPU, it's a bad idea to to try something that is not properly or yet uh, fully implemented, because normally that that goes to a GPU hand. So in the previous ca case that I mentioned about doing a full room, if those crashes instead of being crashes on our code, were crashes while trying to run the test until the end, 
a GPU hand will just stop the, the room in the middle. And additionally to the, the development, uh, we, were pro we were providing updates uh, through our uh, blog posts. Uh, it's true that at the beginning of the project uh, we didn't provide too many blog posts, but it's basically because as we needed to do a lot of the basic stuff, uh, all the outcome was not really eye candy. Uh, in general, blog posts are better, if, in my opinion, if you have image. But since March, May, when we started to get uh, some demos working, especially the Sasha Willing demos, uh, we started to provide more updates around one, two blog posts per month. So our, the current state of the project. Right now, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, our objective at the beginning of the project was getting Bookland 1.0 uh, complete. And we can say that we are we are fulfilling that. Right now, uh, the, full, the mandatory feature set is complete. In addition to that, we are also supporting some of optional features, uh, mostly for features that were easy enough to not consume too much time. And because uh, for some cases, as I mentioned before, uh, we were using the V3 compiler. So in some cases, some specific uh, shader operations were optional on Vulkan, but we were already supporting that on 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 the compiler that we were releasing from from OpenGL. So since then, we also we have all the features com uh, implemented. We still have some tests, some bugs uh, on when we, we try, when we run the full CTS conforman conformance. And right now we are passing around uh, 100,000 tests, and we have only four phases to go. And for those four, we already have patches for two of them. They are uh, under review right now. About and as I mentioned, we have some we have some testing with some pull uh, ports of the original Quake uh, trilogy, and they are working um, with a reasonable performance. And we also uh, so we didn't test uh, directly. Uh, the Raspberry F um, a community has mentioned has tested the the driver with a PPSSPP that is a PSP emulator using Vulkan as backend. Uh, well, and in addition to the Quake games, we uh, uh, is also working for Open Arena that is a, a game uh, which code base is based on on Quake three. Uh, and as mentioned, uh, we have several of the Sasha Williams demos working. Uh, in fact, right now, I think that only 10 are failing, are more or less. So most of them are working. Uh, until now, we didn't do too much performance work. Uh, mostly of that performance work was made uh, uh, with the quick games. Because the thing is that uh, when, as I mentioned, we tested a little uh, the Quake games, the, the Vulkan port of the Quake games, and we got them working, uh, but we, the initial outcome was the, like, I don't know, 10 5 frames per second. So we realized that uh, there were obviously some performance um, issues there. Uh, but in fact, uh, as soon as we started to work, we solved all the evident or all the more important parts of the performance, and we have patches that uh, went from uh, 10 frames per second to 40, and from 40 to, to 80. So we made some work, uh, and then, and for example, if we wanted to compare um, the the Vulkan port of the Quake 3 has two renders in included on the same project, the OpenGL one and the Vulkan port. And comparing both, um, we got a really a a similar equivalent uh, performance. Uh, in fact, it's slightly better, uh, much faster uh, in the case of the Vulkan, using the Vulkan driver and the Vulkan render. In any case, we are aware that, the, that there are some slow paths in the driver. Uh, specifically, when we, we talk about transfer operations, and we think that um, one of the things that this, that Raspberry Pi 4 uh, GPU includes is a TF, TFU unit, that is a text unit, 
that allows to do some copies uh, directly. The thing is that uh, for using it, uh, you, you need to fulfill some constraints. And if not, you need to use, uh, we use a shader, a, a bit shader. So a, basically, an uh, internal uh, program that we use just for copying. Uh, the thing is that although we are using uh, the TFU, uh, we probably we know that probably are other uses it. So for the future, uh, one of the plans is to to <coughs> to try to use the TFU uh, more often. <coughs> So, a little about the implementation changes that we found while uh, working on the driver. Uh, one of the first th uh, things is that uh, Vulkan expects everything to be executed on the GPU in order to make the most of the GPU. But uh, for our case, uh, this is not quite possible uh, in some cases. Uh, that means that you need to implement some charm and so and you need to add some coordination and usually that coordination means that you need to do some flashes that the end need, means some weights um, this is not ideal and I and we also think um, that probably uh, it would be possible to avoid some of those cases but we are almost sure uh, that for this architecture it will not be possible to avoid uh, needed some CPU GPU uh, coordination uh, during the, the process. Uh, another challenge was related with the <coughs> planner display pipeline in the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, the issue is that B3D uh, cannot sample for linear, linear uh, image. Uh, so that means that for now we don't support sampling from on this web since that is assumed by default although it's an option so we are we disable that we disable that feature uh, in theory we should be able to sample in a window with mode we're running inside a compositor uh, well that's for sure so well, in theory it will be possible to allow uh, sampling or what change on one case or the other but we are not sure if that is um, it makes sense to do that because it can be confused and we are not sure if the developers uh, could realize or would um, will not get confused by the fact that some features are supported on one case and not on the other. So for now, we are going to keep uh, out um, disable that feature. Uh, other challenge that we found is that um, the Vulkan pipeline state is not always sufficient. The thing is that on, on Vulkan, um, the idea is avoiding to, to, to the need to recompile shaders uh, while you are uh, drawing or rendering. Uh, this happens on OpenGL, as is a stage machine, that in some cases the state change and you, are, and you need to recompile the shader in order to reflect the, that change of the state. Uh, the idea on Vulkan is avoiding that, so when you create a pipeline, you, throw, you provide all the state needed to, to to build the shaders, among other things. But the thing is that for our case, we found some cases that that is not all, not, not uh, sufficient. Uh, the more clear case is the case of the te textures, because uh, by, uh, depending on the texture format, uh, the output, the return size of when you access the texture uh, could be uh, 16 or 32 bit but you don't know the format until the descriptors are bound so what we do in order to avoid our compile during drawing is pre-compile two set variants in advance so we, we compile an optimal case that is assume that the return size of the textures uh, will be 16 bit that in general will be the case for most applications and games. Uh, but we also pre-compile a fallback that uses uh, 32-bit. So um, when rendering when, or when the descriptor are bound, if we found that uh, we need a 32-bit uh, format, 
uh, we don't need to recompile, we will just need to switch from one of the sub variant or the other. Uh, other challenge that we found is that, uh, as, as we mentioned at the beginning, uh, we were reusing some uh, pieces from MESA. Uh, one of it is the uh, window shooter interface for Vulkan. Uh, the thing is that on the current implementation, the optimal path uh, requires a PC, PCI GPU, a specific extension, but the Raspberry Pi display device uh, is not PCI. So right now we have a mail request with a propo solution proposed uh, that is still under discussion. Um, it is worth to know that this is this is not one of the reasons that we are failing test. This is this will improve the performance, but things still work without it. So so we are still working on on getting a, a solution, but with the driver working. So, about the future flow for the driver. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, right now we implemented all the features for 1.0 uh, core. Uh, so, our short term objective will be to f get all the CTS tests passing so we could get the conformance uh, from Kronos. Uh, so, it, this basically means uh, fix those tests. Uh, make a full room of all the test suite and then send to Kronos in order to uh, get the driver to be conf as conformant 1.0. So after that uh, we have several to-do to -do items. As, as we mentioned uh, for trans transfer operations we, we have two main code paths. One is using the, the uh, texture unit and the other is having a bleed shader. So we want to explore better if we can use the, the TFU unit more often. As I have just mentioned, we have still this uh, issue about the window system that we could that we want to improve. Uh, another issue, another uh, item to, to work is uh, improve the implementation of input attachment. The thing is that um, input attachment is one of features that um, was added on, on Vulkan and thinking a lot on architect and GPU architectures based on tiles, like the, the one used on the RPA <coughs> uh, Raspberry uh, 4. But our current implementation is basically uh, implementing it as a special texture without uh, going too much into into get the most from the Thai architecture, so we would like to improve that. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, we are already supporting some optional features, so uh, we will need to evaluate if we want to to support more features extensions. Probably we will need to evaluate which ones are the more popular in, in quotes. And maybe, although we still have a lot of testing to do, maybe evaluate if it makes sense to start to work or start to make a plan for Vulkan 1.1. And long term, we also need, uh, we are also thinking about improve the reuse of the code combined with the OpenGL driver. Uh, because the thing is that, uh, as I mentioned, we were using some pieces from the that are already being used by the DL driver, but for some features uh, that are uh, similar but not exactly the same, uh, we didn't start. Uh, we didn't try to to much work on on refactoring uh, because we. We didn't want to enter on a cycle of refactoring that basically was like, okay, this is work, this is really similar to Vulkan OpenGL, let's refactor the OpenGL implementation, and then found that we needed to generalize another detail here, another detail over there. So we had some features implemented on the Vulkan driver that are fully similar to the OpenGLS driver. And at this point, now that things are more stable and we don't know, uh, we know better what's the difference between one and other, probably we are on the point that we could reuse and uh, refactor both solutions after trying to use just one. Uh, in the same way, as 
as I mentioned before, uh, for Vulkan we were uh, focusing on the mandatory features for 1.0 and that includes some features that are also part of OpenGLAS or they have equivalents but we didn't implement yet so in this case we implemented some features on Vulkan before than OpenGLAS so it would be possible uh, to port to OpenGLAS like for example hardware with simple resolve Sample rate shading and robust buffer access. But uh, for the long term, one of the most important things that we need to do is doing more real world testing. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, we were um, evolving the driver based on the test suite, the official test suite from Kronos, and we also do, did some testing with with the Quay trilogy, with the Vulkan port of the Quay trilogy. But we still need to do more work uh, testing uh, other applications we're using Vulkan. Because in the end, uh, it's really likely and almost for sure that we will find uh, bugs doing that. So, for the people that is interested in contributing, um, we are trying to provide a stable contest, so to, pro to enable stable contributions as much as possible. But one of the issues is that the V3D documentation for the GPU is not available for the general public. Um, but the good thing is that there is already available a OpenGLES 3.1 driver. Uh, that we think that that make up for the lack of documentation because at the end the, the that driver is implemented is implemented by the documentation will we'll explain. Um, in some cases, uh, there is a lot of relevant information from from that. For example, the packets and and that uh, for for implementing the Vulkan driver, the the packets uh, that we send to the driver on on included on the DRM messages are the same. So it's a really good reference for anyone that can contribute. Uh, additionally, while we were working on, on the driver, we were uh, uh, letting several fixes on the source code. Uh, a lot of different types of fixes, but in general, uh, we wrote down uh, things that uh, could that are pending to do. <laughs> that is, that's a fix by definition. But we also tried to to write down the uh, the details of what is missing. So anyone that wants to jump in on, on that FISME uh, knows some of the context. Like for example, uh, if we have an algorithm and we know in advance uh, that probably it could be implemented in a better way, or for example, on FISME on uh, where to implement an optional feature if we wanted to implement that. So for someone that wants to contribute, one way to do that is to to do a web on on the source code for the fixes and just pick one that he thinks that, that they think that they will be able to contribute with. Uh, and as we mentioned, we were focused on the 1.0 um, core features for Vulkan, but there are several optional features pending. So uh, one thing that uh, anyone that uh, that want to contribute can do is just uh, use Vulkan info info. Uh, to list all the features that are pending to implement and just pick one in, yeah, and try to implement it. And the good thing is that the CTS already has tests for those, so they will be able to 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 jump the the code without needing to write the test. And as I mentioned, one of the things that we need to do more is test the driver with a real application, with more real applications, well, because we already did with some. So one thing that people that want to con contribute can do is to to test the Vulkan, this driver with applications and provide feedback on on behavior if there is any bug or if there is any problem with the performance at some given point. And for the feedback, uh, we pro uh, we are usually on on an IRC channel at Freenode uh, called uh, slash video core. Uh, anyone can send an email to mesadet mailing list 
And as I mentioned before, um, uh, the driver is now an official driver on, on Mesh Upstream. So that means that if anyone found uh, an issue, they can use directly the uh, the GitLab that is uh, GitLab issues. That is the way uh, the project uh, tracks uh, their, their their issues. The good thing about mm, this movement to the upstream is that if the bug uh, in the end is not directly on the back end, but it's on some of the pieces that we use from the Mesa uh, project it's easier to ping all the developers for, for those. <coughs> so now that I'm finishing the presentation, I want to end uh, finishing with the special thanks. Uh, as I mentioned, as I have just mentioned, we are releasing a lot of work done uh, on already on Mesa. So we want to thanks to all the people that have been working on near on, on the spirit translator, like Jason Ekstrand, on the window system integration bits, etc. etc. <coughs> and we also want to thank uh, the system mess who can drive the developers. Uh, the thing is that right now uh, there are four bad Vulkan drivers and also obviously they don't map exactly from one GPU from the other. Uh, it was really useful to have some Vulkan uh, drivers uh, as a reference and to get ideas about how to implement some specific features. So thanks a lot for all those people. Uh, and we re really, really want to give a special chance to Eric Anhold. Eric Anhold was the maintainer, the original maintainer of the OpenGL V3D uh, driver. Uh, so for example, the compiler, the V3D compiler that we use for the Vulkan driver uh, was written basically by him. We, we just have been just extending it. And uh, he also helped a lot during the process, uh, answering our, our questions. And he was the main reviewer for the patches that we sent uh, for, the, for the part that we needed uh, an upstream review. Uh, and finally, we would like to thank uh, Dave Emmett, that was our contact of the Broadcom. Uh, that was really that was a really helpful uh, contact uh, each time that we had some specific uh, doubt about the uh, the broken GPU and uh, with a really detailed emails. So that's all. Uh, I hope you like this presentation. And if you have any question, 